Hello everybody, welcome back to Movement Monastery. I am Francesco and today we are going over the Nordic Curl, also known as the Glute Ham Raise or GHR. Now this is the complementary movement to the Sissy Squat because this is going to be hamstring dominant, the posterior chain dominant, whereas the quads are mostly the front of your body, the quads, the glutes a little bit because you have to lock off your glutes, but the abdominals in front as well, whereas the GHR is a lot more about the hamstrings, the calves, the glutes, and the back muscles. Now, before I even show you this thing, I want to make sure that you can do a couple of prerequisites before even going in, because it's a little bit different than the sissy squat and how you approach the training of it. You do have to be careful about getting into this one. Let your hamstrings be sore for a very long time. So first and foremost, I want you to try something for me. I want you to try to stand completely upright, Take your foot behind you like that, and you're going to keep the knee where it's at and just flex the back of the leg like that and lift your heel as high as you can. Okay, now you lift it as high as you can, and when you get up there, I want you to hold that position. Okay, now if your hamstring goes into a super cramp just from doing that, you probably should take some time just working this with no external weight whatsoever. So once again, fall the foot down, I'm going to lift my heel up as high as I can. This is my opposite leg. And I'm going to lift up as strong as possible. I want to try to avoid arching my back. I'm trying to decrease the distance between my heel and my butt or my hip. So I'm going to lift up as hard as I can in that position. Again, if you feel some cramping back here, it's probably going to be better off if you take the time to work that area. How do you work that area? Doing this more often. Lifting your heel up as high as you can, working that hamstring, squeezing your butt as hard as you can, and you work that position. All you're doing is strengthening the end range flexion of this joint right here of your knee, right? This flexion versus the extension, extending the knee that way. We are flexing the knee and squeezing it tight that direction. Another thing that you can do to help that is, first of all, you're gonna try and do repetitions of that. Try to get to 10 repetitions, lift it as high as you can, back down, repeat that. Or you can do an isometric contraction where you lift it up as hard as you can and you'll hold there for a count of five to 10 seconds or longer. What you want to try to do is get it to the point where you don't feel those cramps in the hamstring. That you don't feel that internal soreness happening right away. That's our goal. So you might only be able to do this a couple times a week until your hamstrings kind of get a little bit more situated to that range of motion. And then what I want you to do is that you're going to bring it up to that position and then you're going to grab a hold of the heel and you're going to pull it in closer to you, as close to your hip as you can, and you're going to try and keep it there. You're going to contract the muscle, try to keep it there, and as you let go, your goal is to try and keep that heel up to that higher position, and then lower it down slowly. You can also do this with an ankle weight, add a little bit 5 pounds, 10 pounds, no more than that. It's a lot harder than you think. It's a lot harder than you think when you start adding a couple of pounds to this kind of stuff. Start with like 1 pound, then slowly build it up over time. So that's what you're going to start with. The next thing you're going to do are slides on the ground. So let's come down to the ground. You're going to need a towel and you're going to have to make sure you're on a slick floor. Make sure there's not like bumps and ridges on it. If you don't have a laminate floor like this that you can slide easily with your towel, okay, on your feet, then I'll show you how to do this on carpet. So what you're going to do from here is lay on your back. You're going to bring your heels up as close as you can and you're going to push your hips up. The main thing here is you're pushing your hips up. From there, you're going to try and let your heels slide out, keeping your hips as high as possible, all the way out as far as you can, and then you pull back in as far as you can. Okay, this is like, this is the next level up. So now you're gonna strengthen that hamstring curl. If you can do five of those, maybe 10 of those, then you're gonna try and work on a single leg version. So you're gonna start here. You're gonna let that heel slide out as far as possible and slide back in as close as possible. Constantly keeping that glute as tight as you can going out and back in. Here's the carpet version. All right, so I have a magic slider here, a super slider, furniture slider. It can be a Frisbee, it can be a Tupperware top. Don't spend a bunch of money on some overly priced fitness version of this. Keep it simple. This is like two or three dollars. The fitness ones can range much higher. Keep it simple. Towels and furniture sliders, or better yet, Tupperware tops. So I'm going to put my heel on top of this. I can do both my heels at first, just like before. Turn this around, make it easier for myself to be on it. 
I'm going to squeeze my knees together, lift my hips up, and then I'm going to slide out and slide back in. That's too easy. I switch to one leg. Same thing. Here, slide out, slide back in. Same type of repetitions. Try to go for five, try to get to ten, a couple times a week. Once the soreness starts to go away, you know you're ready for the next thing. Okay, so as you can see, I have some gymnastics rings here. You can use TRX bands or just straps alone if you want to. Get creative with it. But what we're doing here is adding some instability to this. This is actually a little bit easier than the other stuff we've been doing. But because of the instability, it's a good way to kind of get some well-roundedness to the back of your hamstring and for the training we're doing. So check this out real quick. I'm going to put the arch inside of the ring, okay? I am going to lay on my back. I'm going to start with my knees bent and pulled up toward me, okay, as best I can. And then from there, I'm going to extend the legs out and back in. Same thing as before. But the cool thing about this one is because you're suspended, you have very little time for rest. Your body can't really rest like it can when you're using the towel or you're using the uh, sliders, okay? You can also, and this is also a lot, lot harder on one leg because it's moving around more. So from this one, it's gonna be, it's actually a lot harder because you're having to balance as well. Okay, so this one with one leg, definitely worth a try. From here, come down and back in as far as you can and then repeat. You can add a little bit of weight on your hips too if you want to, but that's the next one in the sequence. Let's move on. Okay, so some people do this with a um, heavy barbell that they can put their heels underneath. Some people put their feet underneath the bed or underneath the couch, but I have found this always to work better when I just have something solid to put my heels under or have somebody holding my heels down with their hands. But I don't have somebody to do that, so I'm just gonna make myself something. All you need is a piece of plywood that's fairly strong three quarter inch should probably work fine or I have this reinforced stuff that I've reinforced with two by fours and I'm going to put a cargo strap underneath it here. It doesn't have to be a cargo strap for you. It can just be a rope if you want, but I find this really easy to adjust so I use this instead. So you want to make sure that you have enough space for your feet to be on top of the board because it can be a little painful if they're off of it. And you're going to also put something underneath your ankles so that you don't uh, cause yourself any unnecessary pain. Because believe me, when practicing this, it's going to be an interesting experience for you. Okay, almost there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get something to put underneath here for my feet. So either way, this will work. You can, I like to have something for my ankles and then also have something for my knees to be on as well. So just to make sure that I'm not gonna cause myself any unnecessary, more pain than what you will get doing this anyway. I always make sure to do that. So you can use a yoga mat, you can use a towel, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go on the top of my knees, I'm gonna put my feet underneath the strap, and again, once you figure this out and figure out the right amount of space that you need, it's pretty easy to get it set up, but the first time you do it, it's gonna be a little bit finicky. And they actually have specialized machines for this too, but I find that I like to do things the hard way sometimes, and I like simple things. Okay, so that's in place. This is in place. Now all i got to do is tighten it. There we go. Now because of the way this is set up, it's going to allow me to lean forward, and then the leverage, the box itself, will actually keep me from falling over because the lever is over here by this back part. So now we're set. Um, what you're going to do from this position is you're going to lock your hips out nice and tight so you're at a 90 degree angle at the knees and from here your goal is just to touch your head to the floor. So I'm going to come forward, keep my hips, okay, I'm going to come forward, 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 I touch my head and I come back up, okay, that's your first one. The next one is trying to just get yourself farther and farther away, your hips have to try and get farther and farther away from your knees, and that's gonna make it more difficult. Pretty simple, in fact, if you start from here, okay, bent over, you can actually try to extend out from there, see how far away you can get, and then pull yourself back. And you'll feel your hamstrings kick in there, you'll feel them cramp up, 
That's just part of the journey here. Uh, but just like this easy squat, there's a couple of ways to work this out. The first one is doing eccentrics, lowering down. So I am going to squeeze my hips tight, allow myself to kind of fall toward the ground as slow as possible, and then I'm going to use my hands to push up, do a little push up, and use my hamstrings to pull me back. Okay, this one's a lot harder in my opinion than the sissy squat too. So. Another thing you can do is put uh, something down in front of you to lower your chest to as like a target zone for you to tap and then come back up. Just like the sissy squat, you put something there to target yourself, go down, touch your chest to it, come back up. Pretty simple. So let's say it was just this far away from me. I come forward, I tap it, and then I come back up again. And there you'll really feel the hamstrings kick in. Whoo There it is right there. It's going to cramp up. I'm going to give it a little bit of love, wiggle that thing around. I'll go that thing around. Same thing, take it slow, just like with your five to 10 reps. With this one, you might just want to do eccentrics, or you might just want to do the head taps at first a few times. All right, but you start out with the head taps, and then you start to do the slow eccentrics, lowering down, the push-up curls, and then also the lean outs as far as possible until you get better and better and better at that and slowly build that toward the ground. What are these good for? Excellent hamstring strength. They'll actually help you with some flexibility. They're going to help protect your knees because you're going to have really good control of your hamstrings, which are going to help with that situation. Overall, the whole bulletproof idea, this is bulletproof number two for the knees. That's all I got for you today. This is the Nordic Curl, GHR. This is like the leg curl of nature. So give it a go. Let me know what you think of it. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up. Please follow and subscribe. And you all have a great day.